Okay, hello, I think we can start. Uh, so my name is Zbigniew, I am a software architect at Intel Corporation, taking care, taking care about a few OpenBMC components. Today I'm, I'm going to present uh, the idea and the POC results for the SMBus to I3C transition for the PCIe uh, management. This presentation basically was, uh, is a result of uh, Solidime and Intel cooperation on this idea. Uh, Co-authors mentioned here, so Myron from Solidime and JJ from Intel are driving this idea for multiple forums like uh, EDSFF or PCI SIG, by the, they, but they could not join us today. So at the beginning I'm going to uh, talk about the, uh, how basically uh, today uh, the I3C management uh, is done and what kind of limitation is there. Uh, then I'm going to go through the, uh, I'm going to talk uh, about the architecture of the system uh, ready for the SMBus to I3C transition. Then uh, we'll talk about uh, flow related, defined and related to the SMBus to I3C transition. After that, we'll go through the experiment results and at the end, uh, we'll go through the, uh, some potential next steps uh, we are considering right now. So today, uh, SMBus is used uh, uh, for the, as, as a solution for the PCI management, um, for PCI devices management. As you may know, there are multiple limitations uh, for this. One of them is, the, is about asynchronous traffic uh, uh, may not work for SMBus in case there are maxes on the way, if there are ma SMBus maxes in the topology. For instance, if the max is closed, there is no way for target device to let know uh, or to send some asynchronous uh, message from uh, target device to the host. Another limitation is about there is no common and widely adopted uh, addressing architecture for the SMBus. Uh, one more limitation is about that SMBus provides very low bandwidth. So when we look at the I3C right now, it turns out that um, most of the, or maybe all of the SMBus limitation are addressed by the I3C specification. For instance, I3C supports uh, inbound IBI, I3C supports dynamic addressing, uh, IBI provides a better performance, better bandwidth. Uh, in theory, it's up to uh, 12 megabits per second. So mor moreover, uh, I3C is considered as a natural upgrade uh, for the SMBus, or uh, rather I2C, right? So based on that, we think that the um, SMBus to the I3C transition for PCA devices management is the right direction here. Um, moreover, some, some steps have been already taken. For instance, uh, EDSFF specification already accepted uh, the SMBus to I3C transition idea. Uh, another step which was taken is uh, the effort which uh, uh, Solidime in cooperation with Intel uh, did uh, to just uh, validate this idea. Uh, and about the results I will talk on uh, a few slides right later. So now the question is what kind of components uh, is needed to build the system which is ready for the uh, SMBus to the I3C transition for the PCIe uh, devices management. The answer is we need the uh, BMC SOC, which supports the I3C. We need the hub, I3C hub, which uh, is compliant with the I3C hub specification. And of course, we need uh, some target devices, uh, I3C capable or and SMBus only devices. Uh, on the diagram here, you can see the um, high level uh, view of the system we have built uh, to verify this idea. So as you can see, uh, as you can see here, we, are, we have used uh, the ASP2600 uh, as a BMC SOC. We have used the hub, uh, I3C hub from Renesas, and we have used the Solidime uh, SSD based on the microchip controller, which supports the I3C. Uh, we, of course, use some external, uh, additional external tools like logic analyzer, I3C analyzer, or total phase SMBus exerciser, just to uh, capture some uh, experiment uh, results. Uh, at this point, I would like to highlight that uh, component here, so I3C hub is a pretty important one, 
it uh, provides, it supports I3C, it supports SMBAS I3C, it finally fix, uh, fixes the issue mentioned before about the SMBAS asynchronous uh, uh, traffic problem. Uh, and basically it is uh, the flow which I'm going to talk on the next slide is basically also based on that hub. So the hub here is a key, uh, is playing the key role in the in this system architecture. Uh, so here you can here you can see the uh, uh, the flow uh, which is needed to enable the communication with the uh, SMBus only and um, I3C capable devices. Uh, this is just an, an illustration here. Uh, all of the details and the description for this flow are available in the EDSFF spec just under this link. Uh, but let me go quickly through some most important part of this flow. So uh, the beginning of the flow is, um, is about the, uh, doing the discovery. And discovery is required to basically figure out what kind of devices we have on the bus. So, so, so if after the discovery it turns out that there are at least one SMBus only devices, we just go to this part of the flow, which is able to handle legacy communication, SMBus only communication, because the bus remains in the SMBus mode. Uh, SMBus only mode. But if it turns out after the discovery that uh, there are no SMBus only devices, we will go to uh, the bottom part of the flow, which is responsible for handling um, the I3C mode. Uh, okay, so now let's go uh, through the experimentation results. Here is the case uh, when we have uh, both SMBus only and I3C capable devices on the bus. Uh, and basically the flow starts uh, from sending the, uh, the dedicated I3C uh, command uh, for the I3C capable devices on the bus. There are two reasons we are sending this command. Uh, first is to figure out whether there are any I3C capable devices on the bus. And the second is about letting know those devices that they should not respond uh, for the uh, SMBus request happening in the next steps. Uh, so in the next steps, we, we are running the SMBus discovery by um, uh, running a sequence of the simple SMBus transaction for each well-known SMBus address. And um, in this case, uh, when we have SMBus only devices on the bus, uh, it just acknowledge uh, the request here. And based on that, uh, system will remain or bus will remain in SMBus mode. Uh, but uh, we are still able uh, we, we are still able to run the MCTP uh, communication with the I3C capable device, which is available on the bus in the same time. So as you can see here, we are able to send the regular uh, uh, MCTP request coming from the host uh, to the Solidime SSD, SSD in this case, and we are able to get the response from the coming from the SSD um, back to the, uh, to the host. Uh, the next case uh, for the experimentation we have did is about having no uh, any SMBus only devices on the bus. So beginning of the flow is the same. We are sending the dedicated I3C command here, uh, but uh, just after the discovery, it turns out that there is no any SMBus devices. There, there was no, no SMBus transaction were acknowledged. Uh, so this is uh, the signal that we are. We need to switch to the I3C mode, uh, and the first step for, the, for this, for doing this, is running again the dedicated I3C command to let know all of the I3C capable devices on the bus to switch to the I3C mode. After that, we are changing the uh, uh, the voltage on the bus from SMBus 3.3 to 1.8, which is the I3C voltage. And starting from this point, we are able to run MCTP communication with the I3C capable device over the I3C or in the I3C mode. So as you can see here, we have a MCTP request, which basically is uh, just I3C write coming from the host uh, and going to the uh, Solidime SSD in this case. And here we have a response, MCTP response. And the response consists of two I3C transactions, basically. The first one is the interrupt, uh, in, uh, in, uh, inbound interrupt, so IBI. Uh, this is um, uh, frame triggered by the, uh, by the target device to let know the host 
that the MCTP response is ready. And after that, host just run the MCTP, uh, regular MCTP read transaction to get the MCTP response. And the last case I have here uh, is again about the running MCTP request in response in I3C mode, but with polling mode, uh, with polling enabled, uh, not the IBI. So again, uh, host uh, is sending MCTP request here. It is just like before, like for IBI, regular I3C write. Uh, but after that, uh, host starts polling by sending get status uh, I3C command uh, to figure out whether the MCTP response is ready or not. Uh, as you can see here, the first get status try return uh, value zero here, which means there is no yet any pending MCTP response. But the second try uh, for the get status CCC uh, running here return value one here, which means that the uh, MCTP response is, is ready. And after that, host, just like for the IBI mode, running the I3C read transaction to just get the MCTP response. So this is all about the experimentation we did. And now let's go uh, through the call action. So uh, we think that the mm, next step, maybe most important right now, is to make sure that the, all of the specification here and probably other uh, will uh, adopt the SMBus to the I3C transition idea and all of the flow related to that and already documented or proposed in the EDSFF spec. Uh, Intel hardware is basically ready with the Beerstream program. Uh, firmware will, will, will be ready with the next program, uh, which is correlated with the PCI uh, 6.0. And Solidime will be ready for co-validation at the beginning of the next year. So I, we think that um, another possible next step here would be uh, for companies would be to just start making products plans. Uh, which includes the SMBus to I3C uh, transition idea and which will be targeted for PCIe uh, 6.0. Uh, so this is it. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any question, please. Okay, it seems there's no question, so thank you. Thank you.